As Vietnam and then later the Cold War drew to a close, naval aviators continued to be on the forefront for technology advancements, ranging from flight instruments to aircraft design. They'd also be called upon in the use of the space shuttle as more scientific experiments were to be conducted in space. And ever since I was 10 years old, uh, sitting in front of a black and white television growing up in Southern California, uh, when I watched Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin bounce them on that lunar sur surface, uh, that was it. So yeah, ever since I was 10, that was my dream. All right, I don't mind a bit. They've got the flag up now. Yeah. I never dreamed of flying before I came to the Naval Academy and then decided I was going into marine aviation. Uh, really never dreamed of being an astronaut. My mother's father went to the Naval Academy, graduated in 1930, uh, became a naval aviator at the, and uh, flew during World War II. My father also went to the Naval Academy, uh, graduated in 1951, became a naval aviator, flew during Vietnam, and so when I thought about the path I needed to take to become an astronaut, it was pretty easy just to go with family tradition and follow in their footsteps and uh, come here to the Naval Academy and go into naval aviation as well. Uh, every midshipman belongs to a company and uh, my company officer my first year was a Marine, a major by the name of Major John Riley Love who was uh, incredibly uh, strict uh, but unbelievably fair and he reminded me a lot of my dad and uh, he became a role model and a mentor to me my first year, and when it was time to decide what I wanted to do, uh, in spite of what I had said, I said I want to be like him. So I decided I was coming into the Marine Corps. I owe a lot to the Naval Academy, I owe a lot to the Navy for giving me, a, one, a great academic background, uh, two, uh, a lot of operational experiences. I think that prepared me well to be selected as an astronaut and to then go on and fly four shuttle missions. My time in Vietnam was incredible. I actually was in a squadron that was stationed in a place called Nam Pong, Thailand, uh, in the middle of the Thai jungle. And we were there toward the end of the, the actual conflict in Vietnam, and, and most of what we did was night all-weather interdiction. I must say that to this day, I don't think I ever flew an airplane with more capability than the A6. It was, uh, uh, it was built to be an all-weather attack aircraft. It had a single mission, uh, which it did incredibly well. Everything that you'd learn um, during your NATOP checks, flying around as a young a aviator practicing your emergency procedures, you know, you um, brought those same skills to the simulator, which more than anything was situational awareness. Developing that sense of being aware of what's going on around you was really critical to doing well as an astronaut, given the pace of things that can happen on board. We have rookie Wendy Lawrence, who's also the flight engineer. Uh, first time I got to look out the window and look back at the planet, obviously a very emotional event for me. At that point I realized that all that 25 years of hard work and lots of up and down and blood, sweat and tears, so to speak, had finally paid off and I was living my dream. Two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Endeavour on a voyage to view the universe. I was commissioned in flight school when we walked on the moon. Uh, and although I was awestruck, it just never occurred to me that I could be an astronaut. But I did want to be a test pilot. And, uh, and while I was a test pilot, uh, a group of the first group of shuttle astronauts selected by NASA, the group that was selected in 1978, came back to Patuxent River, Maryland, where I was serving as a test pilot, and I met a lot of them. One of them was Dr. Ron McNair, who was killed on the Challenger crew. Ron had always dreamed of being an astronaut, and before he left, he asked me if I was going to apply for the program. I told him, not on your life. And he said, why not? I said, because they'll never pick me. And, and he looked at me, and he said, you know, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Uh, here you are, you're a test pilot. How do you know if you don't ask? I owe a lot to the Navy had my childhood dream fulfilled, I would not have ended up as an astronaut. 
without the incredible experiences that the Navy gave to me and opportunities as well. The drag chute has been deployed.